Yes, we're going to do like a, a brief overview of a vast field of technology, uh, sometimes called psychic healing and divining, and instruments to use for such. But actually, it's a field of knowing how to use your body as a, as a temple and knowing how to use it as an instrument. So you have to really have a clean body and clean thoughts and feelings and uh, basically to uh, help this energy manifest itself in you. So we're looking at using your body as an instrument. So therefore you have to have clean feelings, emotions, thoughts, and clean uses of your body so your instrument can be finely tuned. Uh, some people you call it uh, psychic healing. They go into trances and feel this other forms of energy that emanate from your body. Uh, some people go into spiritual possessions and then they could tell you that what's wrong with you or what sort of spirit is manifested in you to cause you to be alien to yourself. And sometimes they use exorcism to get this kind of alien spirit out of your body. And that's because they can detect this finer energy matter that vibrates in you at all times. Sometimes we use candles to bring that energy out in you, incense, uh, burning of a, a, a fragrance of herbs, bells are used, crystals, and we always dress candles with herbs and dress uh, altars that we use to, uh, as a healing table or laboratory, we dress that to spiritualize it. Because uh, people do get possessed by alien spirits. The alien spirit would be uh, the European spirit. Uh, this, and it, Once you're possessed by the European spirit, it's an alien, so you only listen to that alien force and you obey aliens, so you don't obey the African Latin spirit that you need to be in touch with. We find those people that are in trances or possessed by another culture, sometimes we call them Uncle Toms or Negroes, or we say they're not uh, 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 utilizing their melanin. We say their melanin challenge or homosexually challenge. And we're referring to the fact that they're not in tune with their African spirit. Some of the uh, people that are into psychic healing and divining uh, use a witness. They may use a cloth, a, a, a crystal, they may use a pendulum, an ankh of some sort to uh, help that energy move within them and help them to communicate to you, to communicate what's wrong with you, be it spiritual, physically, or some disease state or something like that. And some people don't have to use mediums at all. They can go direct. And this information is usually incorporated in what we call secret societies, the porno society for men, and the Sandu Society for Women is incorporated into uh, what we call the uh, masonry, Freemasonry, and other occult kind of systems use this information. And it's also used by the Catholic Church, as you know, the priests do exorcism as well. But we are looking back into the spirituality of African culture. We're looking at the male and female principle in divining, which the male principle is called the science of divining, the science of psychic healing. And the female principle is called the art or spirituality of psychic healing, spirituality of divining. We cannot use another person's, uh, uh, another culture's divining system or spiritual or psychic system to diagnose each other. That's similar to like sleeping with your enemy. You compromise your, your ability to, to diagnose and treat. Now, I can go back to some of the forms that we're somewhat familiar with. We're getting into divining. You're seeing candles in the stores, and you wonder what they're about. You see them in all of the black communities. You see the candles. Uh, the white candle is used for communion and prayer and strength and spirituality. It's associated with reading Psalms 113, 73, and 99. Then we have the black candle, which is used to dispel evil, overcome enemies, and trouble. And that's associated with reading Psalms 11, 29, 40. And then we have blue, which is for harmony, health, and to overcome fear, Psalms 119 and 138. Then we have red, which is for affection, love, and attraction, and vigor, That's Psalms 45, 138, and 133. Then we have pink, which is for luck, success, and business, and fortune, Psalms 57, 65, and 4. And we have brown, which is command, cooperation of spiritual forces, Psalms 71, 35, and 23. And we have purple, which is to conquer, it's for power, to master, and compel, Psalms 7, 6, 9, 70. And yellow, which is for health and religious devotion and nervousness, Psalms 32, 15, 150, and 62. 
We have orange, which is for concentration, peace of mind, dreams, Psalm 70, 23, 51. And green, money, business, work, and finance, that's Psalm 68, 8, 57. And gold, which is for good luck and good to get work and prosperity, Psalms 4, 8, and 72. And gray, for victory of good over evil, Psalms 150 and 62. This is a fragment of the technology that we're somewhat familiar with. And we see a lot of candles in stores, and we wonder what it's all about. Uh, that's when you're relating it to the, the uh, King James Version of the Bible, which is actually a distortion of the modern principles and modern spirituality. See, we have the green again, which brings good health and wealth. It gives new vitality to people who have been dragging their feet because they haven't felt well and gives them renewed confidence to face up to troubling situations they have been afraid to tackle. A green candle can do that, a green cloth, you see, green flowers, green in any form that you choose to use it in. Pink is the color to use to attract a new love, hence the effects by rubbing orange blossom oil onto the candle before lighting and writing our love's name on a piece of paper to place under a candle holder. Sometimes that's done to ward away an evil spirit or a court case. If you want to get rid of that, you write the, the court the charge and all that under the candle and burn it. We use candles for that purpose in the black community. I'm explaining these things. This part of a whole scientific system and sometimes it's distorted, but I'm going to go back to the original purpose after I go through this with you. Now we have purple. It works against evil and gives you power over others and helps you to overcome obstacles. It's beneficial for the relief of paranoia. Now again, you can use purple as in a candle, purple in flower, purple in cloth. You can use a purple oil like lavender oil. Do the same thing. White is, represents purity and spiritual strength. It's highly recommended to give women peace of mind during the last month of pregnancy. Then we have black will free you from any unwanted friend or lover without unpleasantness. This color also helps to ward off people who irritate and bother you. For the best results, carve the person's name on the candle before lighting it. Some people use a black cough, black flower, black candle, and they use, they write on black, write the person's name on black, and take that to the black cloth, and that's supposed to ward off that person if you know a person who you're trying to get rid of. That this is a strong belief in the black community, mind you. It's part of our village logic and village cultural system that still is present here in the diaspora. Red represents love and passion. It's used to improve your relationship with a spouse or a lover, enhance your everyday life. And blue will bring calmness and contentment. It will also help to bring down the temperature of someone with a fever. Brown sparks general success and wards off financial crisis. If this color gives you the carriage to face problems, the more drab shade of brown you can get the better able you'll be to you'll be to conquer your misfortune. Gold means good fortune and happiness. Use a bright gold candle, gold object, or gold flower, or gold color cloth. The proper vibration which will help you to improve your financial situation for better effect you put play money or your 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 written notes under the candle. And these are various systems people use. Orange will help solve legal problems and calm jagged nerves. It gives you confidence and energy to face the more serious problems. This is some of the uh, definitions for these colors and candles and why you see so many in our village these days. But it's attached to an old science. Let's go back to green, positive green. See, we see energy spins. This energy always spins. This is positive green. This is the pyramid. And right here is where the energy converts and spins in a negative direction. We have negative green at the bottom of the pyramid, positive green at the top. And this is known as a pi ray. And the pi ray goes right through the king's tomb. And this is how it looks from the top, the negative green current of the pyramid. At the top of the pyramid, this energy force field vibrates. It's going from east to west. As you can see, you see that old yin and yang of male and female principle, which the Europeans and the, and the primitive uh, Chinese and Japanese have borrowed or stolen from us.
Now that's very important to understand that spin. We get into the spins again in the energy force field when you get into the complex here. See, we get into the molecular complex, how this, these divining elements are put together. These divine elements are known as minerals, electrons, and protons. They divine because they behave the way that God manifests them to behave. And here again we have that spin. Everything is in motion, always spinning. The neutrons and protons and electrons, the melanin particles are spinning. Then we have a melanin cluster, which we call a nucleus in the cell. This is the little cells inside of your body. We see the colors again associated with it, the blue. We see the yellow and the orange. We see the blue, the yellow, the colors again. Because these uh, substances all radiate a color. So the colors are deep within our cells and the molecular structure of our cells. And this motion that we are using for divining is in the metals themselves because each metal has a spin. That's why we have the effects of metals. Gold is for metabolic disorders, diabetes, intestines, and bowel, and the purification of your system. Then we get into silver, which restores electrical current in the scope of your adrenal glands, your intestines, your spleen, your thyroid, and your brain. And we have mercury, which stabilizes your energy, is good for purification and lower digestive system. And we have tin, which is for anemia, nerves, brain, and circulatory system. And copper, a lot of people use that for arthritis for blood, purifying your blood, your liver, your pancreas, your eyes, and ears, and emotions. And of course, lead is energy. It counters destruction of the cells. And too heavily content, it rebounds and destroys the cells. So we're looking at the use of metals, while people put together silver and gold and tin. Now we, we're measuring the spin. Remember I showed you the spin of the uh, nucleus, how the cells are spinning? They spin in the center is I am. I am force is known as God. And then this force starts radiating outward. It imagines, it images, and then it gets to a knowing point. Then it's able to conceptualize. Then it's possessive of that I am. Then it intellectualizes. Then it puts that intelligence into social system. And then it censories it. It's sensors, it spreads it out. This is known as the I am. Now this is the kind of energy we're contacting when we use the divining system, this finer energy. The energy is spinning from north to south to east to west. And we're contacting the energy on this level with these the dowsing, in, uh, dowsing instruments, the pendulums, the angst that we use for divining. Again, the energy is spinning, be it emotional energy, spiritual energy, physical energy. If it has minerals or uh, mineral, divine elements in it, it has a spin and produces energy and colors. So we're contacting this energy. If it's acting positive, it spins one way. If it's acting negative, it spins another way. Energy moves from the north, north spin, east-west rotation, or southern rotation. This is how it looks from the top. This is how it looks from the side. And it goes into these, what we call, cardinal points. Now, when you're looking at the energy, you're going back to the superstitious belief of the Europeans. And we have to look at it for what it is. Now, the concept that Europeans have in existence today that they promote it all over the world is that energy moves like this in a wave. <coughs> but all energy spins. If you flush the toilet, you see it spin. Water going down the drain spins. All energy spins. These colors spin. And when they spin, they create a magnetic field. They create a male energy and a female energy. This is a male-female particle spins in the same direction, but has opposite polarities. So we're always in contact with the male and the female energy principle. Some people call it positive, some call it negative. I'm trying to get you more aware that there are other forms of energy on this planet. And just because the Europeans don't have the instruments for it, doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Our ancestors had them. It's 
caves and the pyramids and the tombs. But the, the Europeans uh, teach us that what they don't understand doesn't exist. We call it arrogance. They don't have the devices or gadgets, as it were, to detect us of the form of energy. These are the healing energies of the pyramid form. Although uh, the anti-clockwise negative vertical downward flow of a large pyramid form can be dangerous over long periods to those who are out of tune with the light force, harmonically speaking, the vertical positive energies of visible green will flow upwards from the capstone, this is the capstone, of an exact copy of the pyramid can be broadcast also. That's why you find Africans with pyramids and pyramid shapes in their houses to utilize this energy, fine energy force field. It gives you more vitality and more energy, and more able to use that uh, psychic and spiritual energy force in your body, which is in contact with you at all times. I just want to show you how advanced this technology is in existence with Africans today. Now, this is the pyramids. As they see right here, it's the pyramids right here in Africa. And here's how the pyramid looks globally to the way the planet is in Africa. You see where it's sitting. Egyptian navigators traveled all over the known world as far as the American continent. Even today, this ancient monument can be used, the pyramids can be used to get a get a bearing with the sun when it crosses the north-south meridian. The pyramids are used when you to get a bearing of where you are. At noon, the sun's zenith, north-south equals 90 degrees. See? Right here. 90 degrees less altitude and declination. This would easily give latitude and together with a fix for the pyramid with the divining rod pinpoints the exact position on the globe of where you are. This is a half sphere section looking from the from due west of the observer. You see, here's the observer. We're looking this way, and it gives you a fix of exactly where you are, the pyramids, and of course the sun's north-south zenith. This is how advanced the technology is that we're going to I'm going to show you how to use how energy spins. It spins vertically and horizontally. We were looking at the north-south spin and some of the uh, pictures I showed you, but now we're looking at the uh, horizontal spin, which is called female. This is female, and vertical spin is called male. Horizontal spin is called magnetic. Vertical spin is called electrical. Now we're looking at an atom, and I showed you the atom particles and molecule particles and all those colors. Here we show those colors radi radi radiating around the I am. It produces this kind of spin. This is a photon particle. And between this point and this point and this point, we call this a wave. Like you see a wave in the sea coming into the beach. This is the wave, but this is the bottom part that you don't see. This is the spin. We have to combine the seen with the unseen to understand energy. Now, this energy was further explained by our ancestors this divining energy that we're going to use. From the Egyptians' point of view, the black Africans' point of view, pet heaven was made from a material called Ba. This Ba, metallic substance of black meteoric iron, was known to have metallic properties such as conductivity and reflectivity. In other words, these, this is like minerals up in the sky. And up in this atmosphere called the sky, the, the mirror is separated so big that you don't see it as a mirror but things can still reflect off of the particles of, uh, in the atmosphere. Sort of like you see dust in a room. Light can reflect off it and then you see the dust. And this is dust up in the sky, which we call the ionosphere, which is minerals. And the energy on Earth reflects off of it and you get a mirror image of what's on heaven. So you get as in heaven is on Earth. The Earth is reflected again in the ionosphere, which is like dust, a mirror. It reflects back what's on the Earth. That's what we call as in heaven is on earth. So we have these particles that are able to communicate back and forth from the heavens to the earth and reflect each other like a double mirror. And the divining instruments contact these particles. This is the mythological story of the creation of man recorded in Genesis. This was taken from the original Egyptian story of the creator god, Canute, who formed man and, man and his cow in a potter's wheel. The hieroglyph 
symbol which represents Canute consists of a tet between the raised arms of Ka symbol and the word Un, which means light tower, another name for the god Amen. Here is the symbol of God Amen, the light tower, and actually this is a generator. These are pictures of what the Europeans would call primitive electrical generators, force fields that utilize energy. And we were explaining this electromagnetic force energy which we're going to use. Our African ancestors were explaining that with the scarab, a symbolic of the god Kepra, is a dung beetle commonly found in black Egypt. It is usually seen rolling a ball of dung, which is manure, which contains its lava, which is the egg. The beetle puts its egg in the manure and rolls it around the countryside, creating in the mind of the Egyptians an analog to the solar orbit. <coughs> in the Egyptian cosmology, the universe is represented as a cow called Nut. Here we have the zodiac symbols, and the symbols of the planets. At the period of gestation, after rolling around through all of these symbols, then the egg returns to its astral homeland after passing through the 12 regions, and then it's born again. So our ancestors were drawing pictures of this fine energy to let you know that it existed and how to use it. Now we have a psychic healing. Psychic healing this in, illustrates the curative properties of negative ions. The electromagnetic energy of the mental concentration can be directed through the breath of life by a competent psychic healer. Here we have the unk, which is actually a, a electromagnetic instrument picking up the energy in the third eye, is broadcast to it and translating it. This instrument translates that energy. Just as you have the laying of hands, which contacts the energy in the person who's ill, and we use this ele electromagnetic force, a positive one, to correct a negative one. It also can be done with needles, which we call acupuncture. Now, we're getting into the uh, use of the uh, medicinal un. I know you're used to seeing the uh, decorative one. This is the effects of colors on rods. And this rod, as you can see, resembles the unk. Where this point comes together, we call this a flame point, and its bindings are here. This represents the investigate. This represents the antenna. See, the butterfly has this antenna, and it picks up vibration. That's how it knows its direction. Those how to mate with each other, communicate with each other, knows the flowers and all that because it uses this <coughs> antenna to pick up this finer energy and it's always in this V shape. And here we have that V shape. Of course, psychic is, is the word for both soul and butterfly from the belief that the human soul becomes a butterfly, butterfly while searching for reincarnation to be born again with God. So we get that word psychic intelligence associated with this divining instrument. It's intelligence that is picking up, be it spiritual, physical, or mental. It's picking up this finer intelligence. That's what the antenna is. Let me show you a close-up of a moth's antennas. It's picking up this finer energy. We see these butterflies and bats and other animals doing it all the time. We wonder what's happening. They're just utilizing the finer energy, like I was talking about the dust. It picks up the energy from the walls, from the floor, from the sky, and it's carrying it. And these antennas pick up that energy. This is the antennas of a, a, a moth, butterfly moth, picking up the vibrations so it can communicate. Know when to eat, know when to mate, broadcasts danger. And you can see the same effect on tree leaves and needles. See the tree leaves and needles as a microwave receiver? See how they, these twigs are picking up energy which broadcasts to the plant? So the plant knows how to adjust itself for rain, for electrical storms, so it can utilize that energy. And we just copy that when we have a TV antenna. We're just copying what's in nature. Everything we need is in nature. Here we have a beech leaf. 
and that we have a logarithmic aerial serial. A logarithmic aerial, see? We're just copying what is in nature. How the, the leaves are picking up the fine electro, electromagnetic vibration and is using it as a form of food. It also alerts itself to danger. Now we're looking at some of the ancient instruments that our ancestors used. We had the serpent, the symbol of the Kundalini consciousness here, and then we had the symbol of radiational sunlight. This is what you call a disc today. This disc that people use for the television, this is the first disc. They used to make them very big in Africa, made out of gold and silver. The Europeans came in and melted them down and used them for coins and jewelry and such like that. Big disc. We were picking up the finer vibrations. Then we had the symbol of the life force. We have the Ankh right here, which is a divining rod. Then we have the antenna, which is right here, a wave guide ruled in conjunction with the Ankh rod. It's a ceremonial representation of a diviner's art. These are divining instruments, psychic instruments. The disc was pissed up finer radiation. We have the antenna. Wave guide, we have the unk that picks up those vibrations. We have someone who's in contact with the electromagnetic force fields, the psychic force fields, the spiritual force fields. Sometimes you can't get this information directly, so you have to get use an instrument to translate it for you. And that's what I was showing you there. We're going back to the uh, science itself, so it won't seem so uh, weird to you. Because the Europeans made all of our sciences negative and something superstitious and voodoo and other kind of deceptive terms they used to keep us away from our power, our true power. Now remember I was showing you that uh, scepter, as some people like to call it, that, uh, that rod, here's the electrical field around a dipole antenna. This is the field of electricity that's measured around the dipole antenna that was held in the earlier uh, transparency the positive and the negative. What is happening in the scepter, a rod, a conductor, or a connector is an important electronic component used in the conveyance of current through a circuit in discharging a capacitator. And here we have that same concept. Here we have it. The scepter in contact with this energy. We have the dipolar here. That's why our ancestors were shown you holding these scepters to symbolize the power over the lethal force of electrical discharge. This rod having a loop at its base which allowed a free swinging connection is a switch. Once planted by the loop, it was thrown against the shrine to affect the electrical discharge through the ground. Now, we use those rods or scepters and we use them in color magnets, same principle. It's using color magnets. We have the north, remember I showed you the positive green earlier, how it spins? This is in the color magnet. Negative green down the bottom, positive green at the top. We have infra and ultra black. We have infra white. And this is how the color breaks down or cascades the color magnet. We have the white, the violet, the indigo, the blue, the green, the yellow, the orange, the red, and the black. The same colors as the candle. And that's why we use those color candles because we could, couldn't find anything to make out our, our uh, psychic instruments with. So we would use what was handy, what was about us. And we were using the color candles to sim symbolically pull in this kind of energy because every color white vibrates to white, every color blue vibrates to blue. So it was actually creating a magnetic field by using these colors. We created a vertical magnetic field or horizontal magnetic field. Now if you just want to see a little more technical involvement with the electromagnetic color fields, here's how the cosmic rays break down when you're doing electromagnetic uh, frequency spectrum. This electromagnetic frequency spectrum that you're looking at, you look at cosmic rays at 10 to 25. See, we're looking at gamma rays, X rays. We're looking at ultraviolet rays, visible rays as a frequency or hertz, how they vibrate cycles per second. We have the VHF, UHF TV. These are the frequencies of that. 
centi centimeter waves and millimeter waves. These are the ones that the Europeans can measure. But our ancestors were doing this long before the Europeans. Remember, when you use research, you're actually asking the Europeans, say, let me see the research, because they can only translate it when you put it in their language. And their language is they call it research, which is merely the rituals and ceremonies of the Europeans in chemistry or electricity. That way they can understand it. Here's a picture of an aura pendulum with a black body duplicating the black dot. And of course, uh, I was showing you how the colors and frequencies are broken down on it on electromagnetic, and we have the white and various colors, and we adjust it there with this little notch so we can use this instrument. There's a certain way you have to hold it. I'll demonstrate that to you in a minute. But since you couldn't see that very clearly, here's how it looks when it's taken out of the fellow's hand. You can see that the spectrum, how the colors are broken down, ultraviolet, violet, the blue, the green, the yellow, the orange, the red. This is the spectrum pendulum. It contains a file of radioactive salts in a harmless solution such as tritium or radium. The aura pendulum looks, looks the same but does not contain any source of stimulation. It's a radiomagnetic detector, not radioactive. This is how these instruments are technically structured, so you can see. And all of it comes from our ancestors. And now I'm going to show you elect electromagnetic fields and, and the pendulum effects. We have a rod pendulum. It detects those spinning energy fields that I showed you in the molecule and electrons and protons, and how the energy spins uh, in the pyramids. These, mag these devices, the rod, electromagnetic fields, and pendulum affect this rod, pendulum picks up that kind of energy. Because each disease produces a certain vibration and a certain color. And so some people use pendulums to pick that up. Now for those who uh, don't have access to those type of instruments, you can make a pendulum. See, I'm using right here, uh, uh, which you buy a thread on using an empty uh, cotton reel and I attach a string to it, a black cotton or white cotton wood, wooden reel. That's the one you buy the thread on. You take all the thread off of it, get yourself an empty spool, unwind it, put the thread until the visible coil is a right spiral. Fix the thread in a notch and pass the end through the hole. So you go to that little niche at the end of the spool and wrap it around and come through the hole. And here's how it looks. And you're attaching this to a, a little stick. Now you have the pendulum. You can make it out of spool of thread, empty spool. And then, then you have the instrument that you need. Very easy to make. Some people like to use the, uh, the dowsing uh, other uh, instruments, such as this one, which I'm showing you. This is very easy to make too. You can use a spool as well and get yourself a coat hanger and bend it in this shape and put it through the spool. Dowsing rod is made from a fence wire here and the handles of wood. It simply stuck it in the ham and the wood and the ball point uh, case. What they're saying is they use the empty ball point. You have a ball point pin and you take the um, the, uh, what they call it, the uh, cartridge out, and you put the wire of a coat hanger in it and you sh bend it in this shape, and it serves the same purpose. You can make the instruments, or you can uh, buy them. Remember, energy is constantly moving and constantly around us. Um, I'm going to show you uh, one just now before I go into further breaking it down. Now then, this is the medical ankh. See? You're used to seeing the ankh that people wear in decorations and fashion. This is the medical ankh. And while I was showing you how the antennas of a butterfly bend like that, you notice the antennas always bend like that on butterflies and moths because they're picking up the electromagnetic vibratory field. And this medical ankh is used like this. You hold it like that. See how I'm holding it with my fingers? this way. 
Now it will probably jump a little bit when it gets when it comes in contact with electromagnetic field like that. So sometimes the patient or someone who's ill, you can lay them down flat on the bed or massage table or the floor, and then you pass the unk over them, and where it dips like that, it lets you know that something is wrong in that area. This is divining, detecting an illness. But you have to be cleansed yourself. You can't say, you can't imagine the illness there and then force it to be there. You have to be open and just open your whole body as a channel to receive this energy and you hold your unk thusly and when it jumps down or up like that it lets you know that that part of the body is ill. It's a medical unk and this is the flash point that I was showing you earlier. I'll show you it clearer in other, other slides. This flash point where the energy converges and spins left and right. In the, in, the, in the horizontal plane. When I was talking about spins and using the pendulum, this is one of many types of pendulums that people have and use. This pendulum here, some people program that print pendulums. They may put some water over it or sand over it to purify it so it can be ready to be programmed. And then they say, I want you to know to go up and down like that. And then you say, come to a stop. Then you say, I want yes to go like this. And you say, come to a stop. Or you can say, I want no to go counterclockwise like that. And you say, come to a stop. You say, I want yes to go clockwise. It goes like that. And that's how you can program your pendulum. And then you go over a person's body if they're laying down. And it goes, yes, that part is ill. If you don't have their body, you can use a witness as a piece of cloth or a piece of their hair and put it on a picture of the anatomy of the body, the digestive system, and put that in your hand or put that in the hand which you're holding your pendulum. Some people like to ground it in this hand, holding what we call a witness, which is a piece of the person's hair or a piece of cloth or something or picture of the person. And then you take that over a picture of the body or you can use the words themselves you can say liver or you can say kidney and it will let you know whether that part of the body is ill by saying yes or no but you always have to be specific with pendulums you have to say is the liver ill you don't say is there something wrong that's too general you say is there a disease in the liver is there a disease in the kidney is there a disease in the eyes should the person stop eating a certain food? Some people use this with food. They put a put an apple in their hand and say, should I eat this apple? And they'll say yes. And that, that way they know what they're allergic to. Say, is this food going to harm me or help me? Should I eat this food today? You have to be very specific and say no or yes. Some people line up their beds with pendulums so, so they know where's the right position in the room for their bed to be in the center to the left or the right. And they go over the floor like that and, and they will go yes when you reach the right spot. There are many ways to use a pendulum. You can be very creative with it, but it's dealing with this finer energy, the spinning energy, the energy that we're talking about. It's this type of energy is represented by the snake. That's finer type of energy. The components of a typical isolator, that's moving energy. Isolators were used to get rid of cancer diseases, tell them outlawed around, I think it was 1946 in the United States. Uh, they were used quite successfully. Isolators can be traced to the Amen priesthood, which wielded power based on knowledge kept secret from the masses. The symbols and many hieroglyphic reliefs are, in fact, elements of electronic circuit design meant to convey knowledge of the hidden forces of electromagnetism to the future generations of this order. You see? That's what we're referring to. It's, it's in uh, uh, many uh, books. I was using some of the diagrams in Christopher Hill's book, Super Sonics. I want you to feel at ease and comfortable with this kind of information and feel at ease and comfortable with using the science in various forms. Some people like to use the unk, some people like to use the dousing instruments, the pendulum. Dousing is spelled D-O-W-S-I-N-G. And we say dousing. And there are many books in the public library about that. You can very easily obtain them. 
And there's a book called The Ankh by uh, Nur Ankh Amin, which is a very good book on the subject. It's called The Ankh, which helps you with this information, aside from the book uh, that I mentioned, Super Sonics by Christopher Hills, which gets into ancient African instruments. But detecting that kind of uh, energy is depicted in this uh, glyph here, in this picture that the, the sink held by the bar represents the electromagnetic emissions of the car. Remember the melanin never dies, it stores information, it stores memory, so you can pick up that information even when the person's dead. That's how the, the dead communicate with the living, through the melanin, because it gives that information, it stores it, and you can contact it at any time and use it. I'm showing you our ancient drawings of this energy force field. Boiling water, spark, see? The primordial atmosphere causing a spark to, to ignite. And this is manifested by this drawing here, which is a symbol of Christianity, the fish or UFOs. Same symbolism, be it the scarab, the wings being the tet. The other ways to explain reality and when people use those other ways, the Europeans will call them primitive or superstitious, in some way uh, degrade that kind of intelligence. Now, the, in 1798, Napoleon recruited 167 scientists. Remember that Hitler went into, the Germans went into Africa with the same amount of scientists, I think it was more close to 300, to steal the information. And in 1801, Walter, the so-called discoverer of the pile of battery, was given a medal and pension by Napoleon for his contribution. Just information they usurped from Africa, put it in European terminologies, and claimed it as their own. Here we have the jet or pile of battery. This is the battery. This is the new drawing of the battery. This is the shim, the symbol of ohm, electricity. All that's African, which was taken from us. And we don't recognize it when it comes back, even when it's clear to us. In the beginning, Genesis 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Remember I showed you how the earth is reflected in the heavens through these particles of energy. We have the island of vacuum glass tube. We have the brake discharge in, which is electrical. We have the car, which is an image double. We have the horizon, the God Amen, which means lamp or light post, and we have the battery. The battery that lights the light post or the lamp. All of it's quite clear once you understand the language. We have to go back and retrieve that now. And a lot of you uh, have seen my uh, business card where I have the symbol of the Ankh on it. This is the word ank, the glyph for ank. Light, water, and dust. Symbolizing the tree of life, eternity, the electromagnetic force as in heaven is on earth. The mother, father, God, principle. And let me show you the African astrophysics. And how we symbolically represented the radiograph of a typical radio galaxy of jets projecting from its whirling black hole nucleus. Remember I was telling you how energy spins, and this is representation of that spin again with the ump, the twin serpents, illustrate the unique feature of the radio galaxy, which appears as two separate radio sources. Now then, let me show you the ank. I you saw my medical ank. A-N-K-H, Ankh. Now I'm going to show you the other Ankhs, how to use. This is the magnetic, the magnet's place at the flash point, which I showed you on my Ankh. And this is a Akhenaten's microwave Ankh device. See the horn of the antennas there and the wings of ICs, the energy feeding in here. Then you have the Ankh detector of light force. This is that flash point again. Remember I showed you the flash points on my, on my medical unk. Flash points again, see? Receiving that horizontal as well as vertical energy, the fine matter, which allows you to detect illnesses of the fine matter, which ma manifests itself in the coarse matter. That's where we get the word 
scription, which means mental, prescription, which means physical, and superscription, which means spiritual. And you can dis detect the script of each one of those forms of energy. This is the modern divining rod showing the discharge of bioenergetic force when it resonates from that flashpoint again. We're just detecting energy with other instruments. And this shows how the divining unk is used, the one I just showed you. Remember, all we're doing is explaining energy. When you use mathematics, you're explaining energy. When you use the word chemistry, it's another language for explaining energy. Psychic is another language for explaining energy. And this psychic healing or divine healing are just words that we use to explain energy, the energy that we are detecting with these instruments. They have a holistic function. They detect spiritual energy, physical energy, and mental energy. There's a variation on the unk. Some people put it in a spinning form like that. Spin the bottom to just to come in contact with the spinning energy and sometimes it's spin like that. But again, it still looks like the spread that be spread on the antennas. That's the principal way the energy is coming into that pyramid shape because we have the pyramid again. And the base of the pyramid is you when you hold your ankh. Here's another type of ankh for you to look at. I just want you to be more aware of these things. We had this type of ankh was undoubtedly the power transmitter for a loop circuit of the sink. This is energy. This is a power magnet because you create magnetic fields when you create electricity and when you create this magnetic fields you create electricity, you create this energy. And these are, of course, power transmitters. The words themselves indicated, of course, the glyphs here, sink, you see the light radiating, you see the capacitator there, the light rays. I want to show you how this unk circuit looks like technically. Here's the unk circuit. You were just looking at a drawing of it, but this is how it actually operates. The capacitator, the condensers, the grounding, electrical charge going through a loop, creating magnetic fields. Anytime electrical energy spins, it creates magnetic fields. And it goes through here, it creates electrical sparks, electrical energy. Here we have a person grounding the unk and creating this energy. They acting as the ground. They're acting as the switch to turn on this electrical energy. We have the microwaves coming in. The microwaves coming in the coil, creating a spark which creates a battery which sends a charge out. These are ancient instruments. The Europeans gave another designed to them and called them their own, as usual. Here's a drawing of a battery, as we would call it today. Double generator. See the coils on both sides here. We have the coils on both sides. We have the unk on both sides. It's a form of electromagnetic switch. All energy is not electrical. Some of the energy we created was magnetic energy. We ran both by magnetic energy. Magnetism is female, electricity is male. Europeans tend to use the male principle, which is electrical energy. But all of our bulbs didn't run light bulbs and light sources were not generated by electricity, they were generated mag magnetism as well. And you can see from the Greek letters themselves of Alpha Omega have come to represent Christ, but here we have the unk, Alpha and Omega, once again. In the original myth, Horus lost an eye in his victorious battle against Set. And after his wound was healed by fault, he gave the eye to Osiris to eat, which vivified and strengthened him. The eyes of Horus are the sun and the moon, and our sun is living water, made mostly of hydrogen that has not suffered the death of oxidation. 
so we're going back to these ancient instruments to recapture that source of power that we're overlooking and walk away from our culture, our Africanity, we walk away from our power. That's why I want you to become more aware of the divining instruments that are available, knowing how to use your um, pendulums. I mentioned before, programming either this way to say yes, and this way to say no, or clockwise to say yes, stop, and or counterclockwise to say no, to pick up energy. You can use your hand and go down a person's anatomy, touch their heart, the, the pancreas, the spleen, the area where it is, the colon, the area where the uterus is, the area where the bladder is, and the and the pendulum itself will say, yes, there's a disease there, or no, there is not a disease there. But, so first you must program it to do that for you. But mind, you cannot have impure thoughts and impure feelings and emotions and be a fine-tuned instrument. You can do the same thing with the medical unk, as I have here. I showed you the flash points. I showed you how it picks up vertical energy fields and horizontal energy fields. You can do the same thing there when the person is laying down flat on a, on a massage table or bed. You can go down the anatomy like that and it will jerk when it hits a diseased section or part of the person's body. Or you can use the words, you can say the person's name and say if their liver needs a treatment or their liver ill or this is the main disease is in this liver. And the ass and the pendulum will say yes or no for you and the uncle will say yes or no for you. Remember, just because the Europeans say it doesn't exist, doesn't mean that it does not exist. This is just their way of capturing this energy and keeping it for themselves and turning you against your own African power. Uh, we uh, have to get back into our spirituality, get back into our ma'at, and get back to our divining ability, our ability to sense this multiplicity of energy that's radiating from us and radiating in, in toward us because we are vehicles of this infinite energy. And this energy is a language that allows us to communicate to our wellness as well as our illness. We have to build that again. We have to contact the spirituality. It has to be a spirituality that matches our social and political condition of today. So to like, uh, I think it was between 1800 and 1831, the uh, African Methodist Episcopal Church in Charleston was closed because it was too subversive. It was closed by the federal government. They were using a form of spirituality that met the needs of the people. It wasn't antiquated. Similar to uh, the, the good music of Louis Armstrong. It's very good, well structured, well played, and very modern for that time, but it doesn't match this time. And our spiritual systems has to be brought up to date, has to be brought up to the needs of where we are at this time. We should have churches and temples and mosques once again being closed by the federal government because they're helping to create too much uh, subversive behavior, the, the Denmark theses, creating revolutionary spirit. It has to meet those needs or that's an else is not a spirituality which is progressive in us. It's a spirituality that keeps us in prison. We have these spiritual policemen to tell us not to think this way and to think that way. If you don't think this way, it's not African. If you don't think this way, it's not Christian, it's not Islam. They're spiritual polices. The spirituality has to move and progress with the people to meet the needs of the people in order to be a spiritual system that functions, that's organic. We can't go back and use something that's out of date to communicate with our young today with our youth today. We can't use the old slangs. We have to use the slang that is appropriate for this day and time. As long as it's founded on Ma'at, it will function and bring us to the right date with destiny that we have, the date to dominate this planet once again. We have to fight and protect our position because all our spiritual systems in Africa had a military. They had a military to protect it and to defend it and also to attack its enemies. All the spiritual systems had a functional military at all times, and we have to go back to that. We have to base our rituals and ceremonies on our culture. You can't give the youth a ritual and ceremony without it being attached to a cultural foundation. The rituals and ceremonies are just to aim us back to our culture. They are not the important thing. The culture of Ma'at is more important than rituals and ceremonies. That's why we can update them and change them. We're not changing ma'at, we're changing the rituals and ceremonies, we're changing the spiritual systems, which should be organic. 
we can't let our spiritual policemen lock us up and keep us in a, a, a vibration and not contacting this energy of looking at us like we're weird and, and something wrong with us when we start using our unks and our pendulums and our crystals and our altars and our divining instruments to contact this energy force field that was given to us by Mother, Father, God of all and in all. So we have to do that in order to be fully in control of our Africanity. We can't let the Europeans usurp and take things from us and then turn us against it. We have to look at dowsing, D-O-W-S-I-N-G, go to the libraries, get books on it, get the book called The Ankh by uh, Nir Ankh Amen, uh, read again about this ancient energy source and update it to meet our needs to contact the spirit force within us, contact the mental force, contact the health force, and so we can rid ourselves of disease body, disease emotions and feelings and disease spirituality. And that is any spiritual system that is just sleeping with the European spiritual system. That will cause an abortion of our date with destiny and abortion with our will and our desire and our need to dominate this planet again.